And good afternoon, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. I don't have a lot to be adding in that the, the uh, S&P continues to follow current analysis very cleanly. And as we continue to track the advance of a minor third wave. And within that minor third wave, it is subdividing very nicely. And so I've added some Fibonacci extensions to start to give us an idea on where this could all end up. So the first thing I did is I just ran within uh, for the uh, internal third wave. I ran Fibonacci's and they kind of point to this level. And 67 has been exceeded, so the next level would be 43.85. And since 69 has been exceeded, so it would be all the way up here. And then I ran an additional uh, Fibonacci extension for what I feel could be the fifth wave within an extension. And that I ran, and that portends to uh, 43.73, so it's very close. Then we have 78, we have 82, and then we have 85. So that's the zone to complete the third wave. So I'm like, wow. I had anticipated and I had discussed that it would be nice for wave three to get up to new highs. And that would be a new high by about, I think, 75 cents, but new high nonetheless then pull back and then give us that minor fifth wave. And it looks like that's what's gonna happen. So when I say, wow, it's because I'm always impressed with uh, the market when it follows so cleanly what the Elliott wave count along with the Fibonacci uh, sequences tell us the market should get to. So well, let's hope that they continue. So what I'm gonna be looking for for tomorrow is actually a continuation of this rally. Uh, we had, um, Twitter reported today and Intel reported today, and both are in the S&P. And so Twitter more than, uh, uh, Intel moved a little bit lower, where Twitter was up about $4 uh, as I came in to uh, make the update. So that is assisting. And so we'll see what happens once Globex starts in about 50 minutes. Uh, we'll see how they want to treat that. And then again, we have the Asian markets that need to respond to uh, the, the uh, gains that we made today. The Russell, by the way, got killed today. The Russell was just was down all day and, and closed down. The NASDAQ was the big winner in terms of movement and points added being up 150, where the Dow gained more after hours along with the S&P and along with the NASDAQ in the future. But the cash market only closed up 25. So I expect some some quick pickup tomorrow uh, when, when uh, the broader market reopens. So I think that we'll get up into this zone. Ultimately, it would be great if we got all the way up there or just move to new highs now, because uh, above that, we have an additional zone all the way. We have 43.93 and then we've got 4,400. Now remember ultimately here, um, based on, the calculations for an intermediate wave five, which again has five waves of minor degree, that intermediate wave five really does kind of come in much higher. That's the first level for the minor, excuse me, the intermediate wave five. So if this third wave, if my, come on, if minor three can actually get itself closer to 4,400, that's just gonna make the, the whole Fibonacci sequence of 4,500 become more of a reality and a, and a stronger potential. Uh, because right now we were putting that on once we put got to this low and we were thinking, oh my God, that's 1,300 points from here. How's it gonna get up there? And it's like, well, let's wait and see. Uh, because it, it actually likely will. Um, actually, that's 49, it would be 300 points, excuse me, not 1,200, 300, um, which is still quite a strong rally for the S&P. Uh, 
And I think now we've got a very clean shot at getting there. Again, based on our large tech companies, which do have a, a pretty heavy weighting in the S&P, they have a heavy weighting in the NASDAQ. So the two markets that I cover here, we still have Apple to report, Amazon to report, uh, Google to report, Facebook to report, Microsoft to report, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we still have a lot of the Titans. And I think also, let me see when Tesla is set to report. Not coming. Uh, Tesla is next week. So we still have quite a few big companies to report. And if they all blow the doors off, which they somehow are expecting, uh, then 4,500 should be easy. Um, and again, what's important to bear in mind is that what we're really calculating here is this final intermediate fifth wave, which is gonna complete not only that intermediate level, um, but we go up a degree, it's gonna be completing a primary five, and we go up another degree. It's completing a cycle three. And that cycle three, whew, that one, um, we're looking for a much larger correction pretty much very soon to begin. And it's gonna be interesting. But in any case, to keep this short, tomorrow, I'm looking for the minor wave three to complete. We have our zones and anywhere in here, folks can really can do the trick and then turn the market lower in a minor fourth wave. Now that minor fourth wave should actually likely come in here because I'm pretty sure now that I'll likely mark this as the uh, minute wave four. And unless we're just finishing uh, the minute third, then we still will, if we get it up higher, it might come down higher. And again, the other thing to bear in mind is that I'm looking at this, this was a zigzag, this was a zigzag, this was a zigzag. So if two was a zigzag, I would expect four on a rule of alternation, which by the way, comes in the book, uh, the You Are Your Own Guru. I go into depth in the next chapters that'll be uh, put out uh, very soon. I go into the rule of alternation. It's one of the rules that Elliot did write, and it's actually very effective and very handy to, to bear in mind. And the rule of alternation basically states that if this correction is a zigzag, or we expect this correction to be a flat, and normally you're gonna get a flat correction where it just kind of burns up time versus price. And <clears throat> it could just kind of zigzag, not zigzag, bounce back and forth, uh, burning up the time until it's complete, but it's in a sequence of ABC. And what that actually tells us, if we're not really coming off, but it's holding a level, um, that the underlying pressure, that the trend is up and that we'd be expecting it to thrust out of that, to not down, but we'd expect it to thrust up out of that wedge or that flat um, to, for continuation. Not a new trend, but it's a continuation of the existing trend, which is up. So we'll wait and we'll see because the market, of course, is going to tell us the markets, of course, are going to tell us where it's going to complete and where it's going to begin. We have our zone. I would not initially be looking for a severe decline. You might, I mean, if we're trading on a one, two, and a five-minute chart, it, that decline is going to look like, oh, my God, we're kicking off. We're dropping six to ten points. Well, in the scope of things, it's not going to be that big. As a day trader, it's going to be nice to trade. So that's my point. But we're going to be looking for this zone to contain and complete likely minor wave three, or at least the sub uh, minute or the minute wave three and get that minute four and then additional five to complete three. So we've got a lot of work still coming in, in the S&P. So let's look for this, this current small third wave to complete up into this zone. We'll get another small four and then we're gonna get a five. And if that's the four that I'm counting, then this exactly was a zigzag. This was uh, a flat, and I'd have to come back to this one to take a look at this. This is the wave two of the minor three, and that's a zigzag. So again, I'd still be looking for a, um, a flat. 
And that's where we're gonna leave it for today. We're gonna to continue to trade. We continue to allow our moving averages to guide us, to give us our entries and our exits and using the Elliott wave and using the Fibonacci. Have a great trading day tomorrow, folks. It's Friday. It's likely going to be slow. I don't know, but we'll, but normally Fridays can now turn slow. It is a weekly expiration. So tens of prices don't get that flex back and forth because traders are going to be happier if they just, okay, we can plan for our expiration at this strike price. Stranger things have happened, but you know that's kind of the rule of thumb right now is that Fridays tend to be slow. Um, and our next update will be on Sunday. 